And, and just for the recording, I'll, 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 I'll do a little summary and then we'll move on. Okay. Um, you were telling me that because of, I'm going to call them childhood issues. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you always have a lot of stress. Hands become sweaty every day. Palms, hands sweaty. Uh, yeah. you're, you're always thinking bad things are going to happen to you. Yeah. And so on. Okay. Yep. So we were talking about where that might come from. Childhood, stressful. Mm-hmm. Some sexual abuse or molestation. Yeah, molestation. Start starting at age eleven or thereabouts. Yeah, it was um, only one one episode, uh, but I guess it's like uh, turned everything upside down in my in my perception of the world. I guess. Oh, there was just one episode. Yeah, one episode. Okay. Yep. Usually, there's many. That's why I didn't even ask you. But okay, I'll make mm-hmm. a little note here. But in that in that episode. Was it was it rape, penetration, fondling? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so penetration didn't happen because I guess I am just protected. I was protected from that because my friend like usually visited me early in the morning. My best friend, she came like to play. Just we were playing dolls and everything. Uh, so she, I guess she saved me from that. Uh, and oh, oh, she showed up. Yeah, she showed up, and uh, okay. this person became afraid, I guess. Okay, but it would have been penetration, probably, if she hadn't showed up. Yes, if she if she, if she didn't show up, like, in two, three minutes, I guess. Yep, this okay. would happen. All right. Yep. And also, you were telling me that your parents had a very stressful relationship, and your father apparently abused your mother? Yes, physically, emotionally. Okay. And you, of course, were witness to all of that. Yes, I was witness. And I guess I just uh, took all the role of the protector because I would never allow myself to cry. Uh, I would never allow myself to be uh, fearful uh, because I need to be there uh, to protect my mother and I would never allow myself to be weak in any aspects of that. So you, to use an American term, you had to be the rock for your mother or if you familiar with that term. Mm, Yes. 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 It's true. Okay. At least that's the way you perceived it. That's what's important. I need to be the stable rock person for my mother. Yeah. For siblings as well? Uh, I have one uh, sister and one brother. Uh, For my siblings, no, I don't feel that because like we were in that together. Um, But they have grown up and they moved to another city to work or to study. And I was still little uh, when they left uh, home. Okay. All right. So your your current symptoms is the general feeling of something bad is going to happen. You have stress shows up in your palms and hands and all of that. Mm-hmm. Those are the symptoms you want to fade off. Do I, am I hearing it right or is there something else? Yes, I want to relax. Like I, I want, like everything is good right now, thanks God. And but, uh, but my own perception is still not good. Uh, my perception of the world, of the situations, I always feel this internal uh, stress. I'm making a note. Yeah. And also, I recently worked with Jamie, uh, who's like um, working with Sherry, I guess. Uh-huh. And I was signed up to her. And two days ago, uh, we worked with her with Unseen Therapist. <laughs> you and Jamie work with Unseen Therapist? Yes, yes. We worked. And, uh, was it successful or did you make progress or, or not? <laughs> 
uh, I feel much better. So at that time, like two, three days ago, I was feeling a little bit low because uh, I was realizing that so much time has passed in my life. And uh, I was like always career oriented, like goal oriented uh, woman, I guess. And I was never like looking at my life at like at other aspects of my life so <clears throat> I was always alone like I never had a serious relationships I was always pushing men because I never trust them mm. and I always chase <clears throat> some unavailable men I guess um, so it was my problem and I was kind of grieving about that that uh, I like spent huge amounts of my life like not even thinking about the other parts of my life. I was always like career oriented uh, person. Okay. Yes. And we worked on that. Uh, so we worked on grief part and then I felt angry at my parents and then we worked on that. And I still feel like there is no grief, but maybe a little bit anger, but I'm not sure. Well, okay. The fact that you've worked with Jamie, um, I, I don't know everything you covered with her. And, and all, all of us have a little different style, a little different approach. We're using the same method, but the approach is a little mm -hmm. different here and there. And I mm -hmm. will see things Jamie won't, and Jamie will see things I don't because our conversation unfolds differently. And mm -hmm and so on. Yes, of course. The, um, your, current, your current symptoms you're talking about, mm -hmm. like any other symptom, just like a symptom of a disease, for example, has a cause. All mm -hmm. these things have a cause. And what we really want to do is get down to the cause uh, we can aim at symptoms all day long. We might get some results and so on, just aiming at symptoms. Mm -hmm. uh, just like from the medical profession, you can give somebody a pill and their symptoms may get better and, and, and so on. But you mm -hmm. haven't really gotten to the cause, and that's where we want to actually get to. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just with those words alone, as best you can, what would you say is the cause of your issue? Mm, cause of my issue? It seems like it's some complex stuff which led to this symptom, to this symptom, I guess, because I am like always um, fearful, always internally stressed um, that, um, I don't know, like, uh, I don't remember even one day which was calm in my childhood. I don't know. Maybe some good stuff was there, but I don't remember them. I only remember how I was thinking, analyzing, expecting that today my father will come and he will be angry or he will be drunk. If he's not drunk, he's just angry and he will like throw up all his anger on my mother. And... Um, it was just he was always angry or drunk and nothing good uh, f from the days was expected. All and right. I was running from my school to, in, to home uh, all the time, expecting that something bad is happening there, like he may kill my mother or he may beat her until her death. It was my only thoughts and I was running home. Okay, let me, let me ask you this. As far as you can tell, if your father did not behave that way, or you had a different father, or your mm -hmm. father left or died or something, your father was not in the picture, mm -hmm. would you have your symptoms today? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I have never thought like that. I think my life would become so much colorful. So much colorful? Yeah, colorful. It it wouldn't be black and white. All right. Mm, 
yeah, it would be much, much different because I remember I was thinking like, what if he suddenly dies? And I was also blaming myself for these thoughts in my childhood. And then like, but it never happened. And um, I just was thinking, what if he, he'll just disappear? Well, okay. But that's my question to you. See, we're looking for cause. Yeah. So we explore yeah. things. And I, I may yeah. or may not be going in the right door. So mm-hmm. you always have, always have to correct me because the uh, only thing I know about you is what you're telling me. Yeah, that, yeah. that, of course, is not your whole entire life. It's one conversation, okay? Mm-hmm. Yes. But mm-hmm. as an engineer, <laughs> I'd like, yeah. like to get down to um, cause if I can. If, in, as far as I can tell, mm-hmm. the cause of all of this is I'm going to say it a little differently than you said it. It's not your father himself. It's not his behaviors. <laughs> this is an important phrase, okay? It is your <laughs> response to all of that. That's what's important. Your response could be, oh, well, who cares? It's my mother. She can't look at it after herself, okay? That, that could be your response. <laughs> yeah, okay. it could be. And it could be, oh, well, I don't like what's going on at home. I'll go stay with my friend and and not get involved with it. That could have been your response, okay? Mm-hmm. Yes. So what we're looking for to, to bring relief to isn't what happened in the past. It isn't your father's behavior and your mother's response and all of that. It is your response to see even today – here we are years later, Mm -hmm. you're having all these responses today Mm -hmm. about all this. It's a fearful world and my, my palms are sweaty and all that's your response. Mm -hmm. It's your current response Mm -hmm. that, that we can change. We can't change what your father did or how your mother reacted or Mm -hmm. any of that along, or even how you reacted (laughs) years ago. Mm-hmm. That's that's like trying to. They play baseball where you where you live. Oh uh, no, we don't play baseball. Well, you know what mm-hmm. baseball is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's like trying to change a baseball score. You're not going to change it. The the score is what the score is. Okay. Mm-hmm. Your mm-hmm. father did. Your father did, and and so on. Okay. Mm-hmm. So we don't we don't change that. Mm-hmm. But your response to it, which is causing you problems in current time that we can change. And that's the good news. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But we need to find cause. Okay. So, yeah. Now, going back to the question, I asked you if your father just wasn't there or you had another father, a normal father or a loving father or no father at all. Or something like that. So that all those behaviors of he, of your father did not occur. You did not see them. You did not experience them. Your mother didn't have all that, all her reactions, etc. Would you have your symptoms today? I I wouldn't have my fearful condition. Uh, for sure. You wouldn't have your fearful what? Uh, my fearful state. Okay. I wouldn't have that. Well, well, that's the essence of your symptoms. I mean, the, the sweaty palms come from the fear I'm thinking. Yes, maybe. Yeah. It, yeah. It's like sympathetic nervous system and a sense signal. Like I am like in stress all the time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and when you're in stress all the time, this is me trying to play doctor. You're the doctor here, not me, but so mm, so, okay. so so correct me, okay but no, when you're okay. when you're in stress all the time your adrenaline goes out of balance your cortisol goes out of balance right yeah, yeah. okay um hundreds of chemical equations to you know repair mechanisms and all that in their body get compromised when you're under all this stress yes mm-hmm. yes it's true okay yeah so so there you are with all this chemical stuff. Your immune system's now got to go deal with that. Because if it didn't, you'd be in trouble. Yes? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Yeah. So when you're under constant stress like that, you're aiming yourself down the road towards disease, et cetera, et cetera, because your immune system has only so much capacity. Yeah. All right. So what we want to do, and again, you always have to correct me. Mm -hmm. um, but what we want to do is to go back into your past. Let's find some things that did happen with your father that you had at that, at that moment, some specific events um, in your life that are stress-filled, that you haven't resolved. And that still kick around in your system and replay as your life unfolds to this day. Mm -hmm. This seems right. Yes, it seems right. But uh, can I add something? It, oh, yes. it also like uh, when I had this childhood, it's like everything is connected. Yes. And also I had problems at school because my teacher was also some kind of abuser. <laughs> like emotional abuser in my primary school uh, so I wasn't like financial my family wasn't uh, financially good uh, and then she always like tried to I don't know I was uh, good at studying but she always like wanted uh, to collect money from us this, this was usual, like uh, when I was studying at school at that time in my country. And I wasn't the one who can provide uh, this amount of money. And she was always like, uh, how to say, blaming me in front of the people. Like it was always constant stress for me also at school from my teacher. So you see, it's like everything is connected. I had stress at my home I was stressed out at school like it was like every time I was stressed out like at school at home everywhere all right like she constantly humiliated me in front of the class and that's uh, I have found out by doing uh, like video session with ancient therapist. It was my first uh, ancient therapist session when I just uh, was going through the online course uh -huh. when I registered it. And then I just tried with this one situation because like, I just uh, don't like to think even about my primary school teacher because she wasn't a nice lady to me at least. <laughs> and uh, she, and then I remember this moment when she constantly humiliated me because I couldn't provide that uh, money. And then uh, it was like a sign from ancien therapist, I guess, because I didn't remember it uh, for many, many years. Maybe I suppressed it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, all right, li likely. Yeah. Uh, you use the term, the teacher and your father, for example, uh, in the circumstances where connected yeah that, that's that's a, that's a that's a word mm -hmm. i could also see it as layered you have this foundational layer at home with father then you go to school and here's another layer on top of that <laughs> yes mm -hmm. that seems right yes are you near tears <sighs> Uh, when I when you said like uh, what my life could be without my father, I felt so much relief. Or if my if I could have different father, because right now I am surrounded with so many like uh, good people, um, and I always like dream like why he's not like my father. <laughs> and okay, your father's living. Yes, he's living, but he's still like not caring uh, he's still like using us for his own purposes but he's not loving us okay yeah your mother is living 
she's living yeah they have divorced but still like our father come to our home to live when he like when he's ill or when he doesn't have no way to go like and we like um, allow him to live with us but then when he's good like he again leave us and uh, do his own stuff and, but he never sees us as his children, I guess. He always like thinks about others, but never about us. And it's like a conflict which, which I cannot understand. Okay. So thank you for all of that. Let me, let me explore a few things with you. And please remember, recall, I don't know your whole life story, so... If, I, mm -hmm. if my assumptions here are somehow not on point, you correct me. Otherwise, we're going to spend time in areas that aren't going to be useful. Mm -hmm. Okay. But one of the things that appears clear to me, but again, correct me, is that your father um, there's a cause for your father's behavior which you have nothing to do with. And, that, and I'm presuming because of the alcohol, the anger, mm -hmm. the abusive stuff and all of that, that's because there is within your father a deep amount of unrest. Mm -hmm. would, I, would I be correct? Uh, yes, I, uh, yes, that's, that's correct. But the one thing which I don't understand, he is like good to other people, but not to his own family. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All mm -hmm. right. Well, we can touch on that. In... Mm -hmm. Let me make a little note here. Like he is good for everyone, like for his relatives, for his friends, like, but he's never there for us. Yeah. All right. So, but yes, I made a little note on that and mm -hmm. we'll probably circle back, but I, mm -hmm. I'm on this kind of like path. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. And that's down the road on the path a little bit. Okay. So yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll, get, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll get there. Um, yeah. But anyway, I'm suspicioning, and I don't even know if you know the answer here, but in his past, he too was rejected. He too was ignored, perhaps abused, criticized, um, and things like that. I would be accurate there. Mm, I for sure know that he was neglected, mm, and he was living his own life from his own childhood. Mm, he Were was like, go ahead. He was mostly neglected by his parents. Um. Neglected, but they just didn't pay attention to him. They didn't feed him. They, they, what? I, I think there wasn't any emotional, like, uh, loving um, mother for him. And uh, the father also was, like, working. And uh, I think he, he didn't feel the love okay. from, from his parents. All right. But someone who is as abusive towards the wife, his wife, your mother, mm -hmm. for yeah. example. is someone who is like everybody else is seeking love they want to be accepted they want to be loved they want to be like you and mm -hmm. me um, yeah. they want to be loved and there's this big love void and the young your father as a young child yeah I'm presuming is looking for this love. He's neglected. He's not paid attention to, and he builds up within him some form of I'm not okay. I'm not good enough. I don't count. Something's wrong with me. I'm not lovable. Does this seem right? Mm, I, I don't know really. Like, uh, I, 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 I only know that I couldn't be angry at my father because I only could see him as a weak person. 
so um, even though he was like aggressive and everything I had this feeling of like I was always sorry for him but I am not sure like how he felt really okay well all know. right yeah if he's not communicating you wouldn't know that but but I've seen this so 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 often an abusive neglectful mm -hmm alcoholic parent i mean the alcohol and getting drunk a lot etc is is him typically trying to just escape from all the internal unrest that he would have the, the yep. internal angers and fears and resentments and things because he didn't get what he should get mm -hmm. again i'm making this up mm -hmm. okay all the stuff that he should get. And so there's something wrong with me to put a kind of a blanket around it. <laughs> I'm not good enough. I don't count, et cetera, et cetera. And he keeps trying to fill that. And one way to fill that is to project it out. <laughs> I've got unrest. I've got unrest. I've got unrest. So if I criticize out there, if I abuse out there, if I blame my wife, <laughs> your mother, for example, <laughs> or other people out there, I will get rid of it. Uh, uh, and yes. that may be true temporarily. It's not true long term. <laughs> am, I hit, am I on target here? Mm, yes, he was always like uh, acting out on uh, my mother, like she always like blamed her, but he also was manipulative, uh, like uh, trying to feel her down, like she was only abused, she didn't only abuse her physically, but also emotionally, so... I am not sure why he is doing that because according to his words, like his father was a good man, like good gentleman who never like even like argued with his wife who like never like who was. So my grandfather, according to his words, words was perfect man who would uh, like never tell a bad word to his wife. So he, growing up, he didn't see that stuff. But I know that his mother wasn't a loving mother. So uh, and she didn't pay attention to her children. And maybe he was like neglected, I guess, emotionally. Well, and that will do it. See, it, it depends on hit. We talked about your response earlier. Yeah. And I don't it's know like your his response. It was, it's his response, yeah, to yeah. all of that. So mm -hmm. he may have had a very, you know, super nice dad, but the mother, you know, and he's looking to his mother, which we tend to do, as a mm -hmm. source of love, and it's not coming. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, and a child does not know how to weigh all of this and make proper mm -hmm. conclusions. You're just too young and you don't have enough experience to properly understand that. So the, a, a child makes a bunch of conclusions, okay? Mm -hmm. um, you are making conclusions, if I understand it right, that end up, that have not been resolved, that end up in you having fear and stress responses today. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, let, let me go back. I'm still looking to get a handle on... Um, cause for your father's behavior and ultimately what i'm trying to do here mm -hmm. is to have you and i get into this um find this cause so you can shift a perception that you somehow or other need to carry on stress yourself to correct all of these problems when it isn't your problem or your responsibility to begin with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That rings? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I would be like really happy if I wouldn't feel that uh, responsibility on my shoulders. Like uh, to like to think about it. Like, I don't know. I, I think I would be so calm even at my school. 
I would be so relaxed, maybe even at school. Mm -hmm. Currently, at, currently at school or the school you were talking about earlier? Uh, uh, earlier in okay. my childhood. Yeah. All right. All right. Because it was like always thinking about like what could happen. Like um, today, like I know he will like return home and again will be angry or drunk. So I should run home immediately. Even today? Mm. Today, I know today, like we don't have uh, this situation, like everything is peaceful at my home. Uh, my father, like, don't drink for 15 years. Um, oh, uh, oh, oh, you, li you live at home? Uh, yes, I live at home, but with my sister and my nephew, like, uh, and my father, uh, my mother lives with my uh, brother's family. And uh, like the situation is peaceful, like in our home, in their home. And my father comes to us when he wants and leaves us when he wants. But he is not like uh, aggressive, actively aggressive, I would okay, say. Okay, so all, all the earlier aggression seems to be past. He has somehow or other become more peaceful. Yes, yes. He like uh -oh. became religious like we, we are muslims and he became religious uh, then he like stopped drinking stopped smoking and uh he became better version of himself actually oh good so you're yeah. no you're no longer fearful of him ah no i am not fearful of him at all like well, and well, I, well you were as I, a, I, you were as a child uh i remember that i was never fearful of my father Oh, uh, because like I was thinking like he, I, I was only sorry for him. I don't know why I was thinking like, oh, poor man, like he doesn't understand like what he's doing. Uh, even it was my perception during my childhood. Uh, I was just, um, I guess, fearful what he can do for my mother. But not fearful for yourself. I was never fearful for myself. I would always like uh, even cover up my mother with my own body uh, so that he could never hurt her. Uh, but I was never fearful of myself. Even this is like my, my mode of living right now. Like I am never fearful of someone, I guess. Or I don't know. I just don't have this fear. I just feel fear when someone tries to hurt somebody. Okay. The fact that you feel stress all the time, if you would, stress is kind of a broad term. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it contains lots of things, fear, for example, anger, grief, guilt, uh, lots of stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you could give me a specific word that isn't stress, an emotional type word behind that stress, what would that word be? I guess it's fear for my um, for people that I love. Do you do you fear for your mother's safety currently? Currently, no. She is safe and she's happy. <laughs> Who in your life, in your world, do you have fear for their safety about now? Nobody actually. Like everybody seems to have like normal life. All right. Well, okay. Then am I, we're still exploring. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then am I correct in understanding that the fear, the stress response that you are having currently, the sweaty palms and all that goes with that, something bad is going to happen and so on, mm -hmm. is simply left over from your childhood? I guess, yes, it's, it's just left over. It's uh, like I am conditioned to feel this and to be ready for everything in case like something happens to someone. Well, most of us, I mean, it's, it's hard not to do this okay, in this world, but, but most of us are cautious about things. We don't drive our car a hundred miles an hour on the wrong side of the road, for example, you know, <laughs> we don't jump off of buildings. I mean, we have some normal 
cautions and fears and things about this world. You've got to be able to get around in it safely. So you have some built in cautions. That's mm-hmm. good. That's yeah. good. Okay. Mm-hmm. What I'm hearing is you also have the built in cautions like everybody else does, but yours are way over the top. They're constant, much more intense than what we would call normal caution. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's okay. true. Yeah. Well, okay. So now again, you have to, you have to correct me. Okay. What I'm <laughs> seeing here is we're not having rational reasons in current time for you to have all this stress response. There is peace yeah. around you. The family seems to have peace. I mean, there's normal stuff going on. Okay. But, but yeah, it's just normal stuff. Okay. And what you're feeling is an echo of all your yesterdays that just haven't been resolved. It's like you are conditioned to react this way. And you just do that like automatically without thinking about it. How am I doing? Yes. It's yeah. It's a very like right to the point. All right. Well, as you know, we usually get ourselves to, uh, specific events that happened in life okay and we bring an unseen therapist for those and we do a number of those and as we do those then the uh, unnecessary fear response starts to fade and more peace starts to show up now Mm -hmm. you've worked with jamie some Mm -hmm. you are part way there as a result or not can you tell uh, it was we resolved. I guess we resolved another part of the big, bigger issue when I was I was feeling like grief f- for my like um, like <laughs> I don't know how to say it, but for my like when I was living like in that mode, I was only focused on my career and everything, and then like a time passed and I didn't develop in other parts of my life, and I was like having a grief about that. Um, so uh, we resolved that part. And then I was uh, feeling some an- uh, anger towards my parents that they allowed me to take this responsibility and like uh, to spend all my energy, all my attention, like all these years uh, to these issues. And then uh, we resolved, I guess, um, grief and anger. For specific events or generally? Uh, generally generally yeah oh, okay generally about the how i felt like during the last days all right i'm going to shift back to a couple other things i just want to cover a little bit with you mm-hmm. i want to go back to the idea that your father some time ago when he was so abusive and aggressive at home mm-hmm. would with other friends be congenial and he wouldn't be that way with other people and so on. Yeah. The way I'm thinking about that is that his other, he didn't have to live with his friends all the time. Okay. <laughs> and all the irritations that go on when you're with somebody all the time. Okay. And so they would be sources of congeniality, sources of fun, sources of friendship, sources of acceptance and things like that. His friends, And as a result, he would behave in a way to attract and keep those friends. Mm -hmm. Whereas when it comes down to the family, there they are every day. And Mm -hmm. he has some financial responsibility for them, which gives him stress, et cetera. And so he he was going to take his unrest, my term, and throw it out at the wife, family, and so on. Yeah. Does Mm -hmm. that seem accurate? Yes, it seems accurate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's true. All right. Um, there was something else I was going to bring up, but it, it escapes me for the moment. Um, oh, I know what it was. I know what it was. This molestation, this sexual abuse. Mm-hmm. You talked about at age 11, mm-hmm. 
<laughs> turn turn your world upside down to use your words. <laughs> okay. It's a personal question, but but let me ask you, has that affected your current romantic life? Like you don't want to get involved with sex, or does it matter? I think yes, it it affected all the parts, uh, like uh, that part of my life, like personal relationships, because uh, I usually like, um, uh, I I was always thinking like, so uh, I should start from the start, like in my childhood, I was reading lots of books and everything. And I guess I was uh, reading about the mother of the Jesus, like, uh, about the Mary, I guess, like in Mary, English. Mary, yeah, 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 yeah. Mary, and then uh, I was so uh, in love with her, like image, like uh, she was like so clean, so virgin, and she like uh, brought uh, to life a baby. She gave birth, but she was virgin. I don't know, like I was so impressed by this story in my childhood, even that I was like, I it was, I remember I was even telling to my sister and to my mother, like, I want to give a birth like Mary, because she was like such a great woman, like, I love your image. And I was only like, nine, 10 years old, I guess, at the time. And then when this uh, stuff happened, I mean, like, I guess everything like was ruined. What I was ex expecting from my life <laughs> but oh, I, was, okay. I, I was i was a child i mean like and it this act was so much like filled with shame with dirtiness and everything and the fact that i sorry uh and the fact uh, that i couldn't share with anyone because i was so responsible and i knew that my father is so much aggressive and then he will blame my mother uh and for everything as he does always. And then I was so afraid of every, everything. I was thinking like he will go to prison and she will kill my mother if uh, I will tell everything. Uh, what the, uh, and if I will tell like what this person did to me and I was afraid of the consequences. And I decided uh, after my friend came in and she saved me, I, say, I said to myself like, you should just forget it. Like it never happened in your life. I remember this moment when I was standing in front of the mirror and like conditioning myself to forget everything about that moment. And then I didn't remember it until I was like 19 years old or 20 years old so 10 years I was keeping it to myself until like one of my like sisters in law uh, she said like oh did you know that person he died like and and it was the moment when it all came back to me as a movie until that moment I never remembered that well you never remembered it okay but starting from age 11 on up um, as the female body matures you start to your hormones get in place your sex drive is supposed to start developing and so on yeah. um, did you proceed through that normally or were you pushing it away i was always pushing it away i i i remember that i liked like all the when the clothes covered like hold my body to like to cover my like woman parts like my breast and everything I didn't like uh, to expose myself or to be beautiful or to be attractive I was wearing these gray tones and everything um, so I would never like date more than two times with the same person if it like if it goes somewhere to serious relationship I would find always something in that person like oh I, I doesn't like him because he's behaving like that and I would block him okay and would I would never give a chance okay well so my a question I have behind that is you wouldn't date more than two times and you'd push away and you just didn't want to get into something deeper is that because that brings up sexual relationships to do that. If you go any deeper, uh oh, here comes the sex and I, I don't want that. Yes, I was always looking at that, uh, at that for the relationships as something like dirty, I guess. Oh, okay. All yes. right. But 
but I, I don't think that it's the only part because also my mother was always telling me like you should never trust men like men will make you miserable like can you see uh, how your father makes my life miserable so never trust men like build your own career like become successful like okay it, it's right. better to be alone this is what she told me all the yeah. time and I, I was living according to that well you were you were you were buying into that okay yeah yeah and and that that may be your I'm not saying that's not a way that's appropriate for you okay uh it it is however a form of what's the right term being in a prison because the natural inclination is to move in that direction you know you, your your body develops a a, a sex drive and that gets yeah. In my opinion, it gets confused. Sex gets confused with love. Okay, it's it's sort of a pleasurable thing that people equate. In fact, it's even called making love. Okay, yeah, <laughs> at least yeah. in English. <laughs> yeah, um, it's the same here. I'm, I want to find out if that's an issue for you now. So I have a like a like a question for you. Mm -hmm. Is there something within you that? that says, I would like to break free of that prison. Mm, yes. Yes, I would like to break free from that prison. Really, yeah. Okay. Is yeah. prison is prison the right word? I, you know, that's... Yes, it's really like a prison, I guess. Okay, and, and so is the stress response for which there's no rational reason to have now, the one that you're be playing all the time from childhood mm -hmm. also a prison yes it's prison yeah it's like i am living in a cage okay mm -hmm. i'm gonna write that that's profound yeah. you said it. i am living in a cage okay yes and i think i can open this door by myself but i don't know how and this well, started ar around like uh, more than half a year ago, uh, I was a different person. I was living in that cage and even not realizing that I was living there. And then something just clicked and I started to realize like, wow, like I have my own life. Like, oh, it's interesting. Like why I am living not my life. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Um, what I think I, I'd like to do is for you and I to have a um, unseen therapist session. Mm -hmm. A little different than the ones we usually do where we take a specific event. Mm -hmm. Well, well, let me continue with it. Rather than a specific event, it would be a, a more generalized, a more a reframing type thing about the prison a way to have unseen therapists help you open the cage, the cage door. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and walk out now. Oftentimes when we do something like that, it sort of takes the edge off of things um, and allows you to go into the specific events a little more easily because the edge is taken off. Okay, mm -hmm. you're a little freer about it, and now you can get down to more details more comfortably. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of on the fence here. Let me just ask you: I, we could either do that, like I just said, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. or we could take the specific event where the molestation was going on. Mm -hmm. Because at that point, as you said, your world turned upside down, or you used words something like that. Okay, mm -hmm. at that at that point, you walked into at least that cage. Mm -hmm. Yep. And do something about that cage. Let me ask you: Which of those two, the generalized thing or that cage, the sexual cage? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Would you prefer to work on? I think a generalized one. It, it, is that because you're afraid uh, afraid of getting involved in the sexual area at all? 
No, no, I am not afraid. I was working, working like, uh, like with some uh, like regular conservative therapy with that. I am not like emotional about that or anything. I just uh, don't know. Like I, I was living with all of this like so many years, and maybe it, it will be good like to start with the general stuff. Okay, I, we. I, this is this is my thoughts. Like. Okay, we well we can do know. the general stuff. We'll do we'll do the general stuff because that's mm-hmm. that's what you asked mm-hmm. about. But w- when you said you really don't have much emotion about that anymore, um, I'm going to question that. And the reason I question that is because you're still pushing everything away and you feel like you're in a cage. Okay. Uh, those, those are your words. Okay. So, yes, yes. so you do have some response to all of that. All right. Yeah. yeah and yeah. it's, it, and it's a pretty substantial response because being in a cage is not a light little OG response. Okay. You're in a cage. Yeah. <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah. A sexual cage, but we're going to talk about a more general cage, okay? <laughs> okay, let's do All it. right. Well, let's just do that. I, I'll narrate. I, I don't know where we're going to go for sure, okay? Yeah. Uh, I just sort of lean into it, and whatever shows up, shows up, okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, G- Gary, can I sh- also add something? Maybe uh-huh. it will be helpful because I'm not sure. So uh, I also like feel like I am never enough uh, for myself, like – not for someone, not for the environment, but uh, for myself. Like, I mean, like, I should always do more. I should always, like, um, do something. Uh, so uh, there is always, like, something to do. But I guess it's normal for the person. I don't know. But uh, I, I never feel enough for myself. And then um, and then uh, I was thinking, like, why this is this happening? Uh, and I also looked some of your videos when they was also one of the clients of yours. And you worked about, like, she was telling, like, sh- she always needs something else to do. Uh, I don't remember it is on the website and I thought like maybe also we are similar with her because she also had some experience with abuse Uh, but also I have to add that my mother like was telling me that she didn't plan to give me birth Uh, and uh, it was my father who wanted a daughter like third child a daughter and uh, I was very loved by my father actually you were Um, what a lot by your father like my father gave me like uh, the love that she, I guess that he didn't give to his previous, uh, my, my sister and my brother, uh-huh. uh, I guess like he, because uh, he was telling my mother that he, uh, like he wants to have a daughter, like third child. And then uh, she gave, but she didn't, my, but my mother didn't want it. Like she didn't want to give me birth. Okay. Um, and she and uh, when she she didn't want to become pregnant again, and I know that. And also when I was like uh, in her womb, uh, she was always uh, stressed out. She was fearful of my father. So I, I was thinking like maybe that's why I am always fearful because she was fearful during her pregnancy. Uh, like my mother, poor woman, she was like always like stressed out like fearful of my father and maybe that's also somehow affected me. Well, I'm glad you said that because that we don't know for sure. I mean, yeah. mm-hmm. just fell on the floor. <laughs> um, we don't know for sure, you know, what, what your response is inside the womb. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, we do know, as you probably know, as a doctor, that the fetus um, reacts to what mother's what's going on with mother. Okay. Yeah. And if she doesn't want you or she's fearful about you or et cetera, you're picking that up. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And, and if she's in stress, you're picking that up in some fashion. Okay. We don't know how much or anything else, but that would add to the idea that, that, here you are still with this stress response, even there, there's no rational reason for it currently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's a good input. That's yes. a good input. 
And then when I was growing up, my mother would tell me that like she didn't plan me. Like she was thinking like I have already two children and that's enough. And then um, she said like, but I am happy that finally I gave birth to you because like uh, you are like, I don't know um, how my life would be without you because like I was like your savior, you know, like. Uh, I don't know, I was such a little kid, but I was feeling that responsibility to protect her because she was telling me, like, I don't know how my life would go without you, like, uh, like he would kill me without you or something like that. I was felt that my role is like protection, like it is my mission. Okay. Yeah. I don't know, like, is it helpful or not, but maybe. Yeah, you know. no, no, that's very good. That's very yeah. good. And uh, maybe that's why, like, I always, like, <laughs> do some stuff, like, uh, and I try to be, like, helpful all the time. Like, I don't know, like, I always have something to do. All right. Let me, let me ask you this before we start. Mm -hmm. You have sweaty palms right now? It's hot here. Like, today is weather is hot, but yes, I have it. I like, I uh, I have it even when I am happy or I am in a good stress or on a, when I am excited about something. Like, it happens. It only doesn't happen when I sleep. Okay. Uh, on a scale of zero to 10, where 10 is the sweatiest my palms, my hands have ever been, mm -hmm. and zero is when I sleep, none at all. Okay. Yeah. What are they? What? Give me an estimate number right now. Uh, how I feel? It's like eight or nine. Oh, eight or nine. Okay. Mm -hmm. And is that typical of what it is during the day, eight or nine, or does it go from two to ten? It's. Um, I don't know. Like even when I try to relax, it is sweaty. Uh, when I start to think about it, like it is sweaty, like it's it's difficult to find moments when it's not sweaty, to be honest. Okay. But yeah. my question was, does it seem to go up and down during the day or is it just pretty much always sweaty? Pretty much always. Okay. Yeah. Um, sometimes, at some times it's not, but it's very rare. Okay. Mm -hmm. And one, one, other, one other question. At the moment, I want to try to give a level for or a, a label for your stress feeling. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, and the label I'm coming up with is a form of anxiety. Does that seem to fit? I'm not anxious. Like, um, like I feel really relaxed right now. Oh, you do? Okay. Yes, I feel really relaxed. Are I'm you not like anxious? Are you zero relaxed? I mean, zero tension, zero, zero stress, tension. Zero, zero stress. St oh, is that unusual? Yeah. Uh, no, it's usual. <laughs> like, I mean, like, um, no, like, um, how to say, like, it's not uh, my whole day is stressful. Like, I am a surgical resident, like, and things can get pretty much stressful. Mm. But it's like, I don't know, but it's sometimes when I am relaxed, I am very sweaty. Sometimes when like uh, I am like working hard and my patients having bad time and I need to be like 100% ready and act like a hunter, then I am, uh, uh, my palms can be like really uh, not sweaty. Okay. Well, yeah. uh, I may have misunderstood to begin with. Okay. Yeah. I got I got the impression that you were constantly in some form of stress. You're telling me no. Sometimes you're perfectly calm, and other times you get more stress. Yes, yes. Like, but in the morning, like when I wake up, I am like stressed about the day. And um, my body is always like ten in a tense mode when I have to go to the work. Like even when, if even if it's not work, I mean, like this. Uh, today is the weekend, and I had a good time with my friend, and now I'm meeting you. Like you are such a lovable person. Like, and then I am like I am relaxed right now. Okay, 
Well, yeah. the reason I'm asking you the question is because I like to measure things. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we know the, sweat, the sweaty palms are like an eight or a nine or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to know after we do this, if there's still an eight or a nine, okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe yes. there's something else. That's a way to measure. And I was thinking you were going to give me some kind of a, a number about your feeling of stress, but the number is zero. So if we go from zero to zero, we're not going to know if we did much, right? Yeah, yeah, it's true. Okay. Um, well, that's okay. We'll just work with it. We'll just work with yeah. it. The, the way we would know about the effectiveness of what we're about to do would be as your days unfold, when you wake up tomorrow morning, are you going to have that same level of stress? You know, mm -hmm. will your sweaty palms, will they be less sweaty, less often kind of thing? Mm -hmm. uh, we may yeah. not get an immediate measure. We try to get one if we can. It's not required. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow I will have like two dance classes, two hours of dance. So uh, I will like um, I will try to uh, like um, to observe what happens tomorrow. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Don't know where we're gonna go, but we're just gonna go. How's that? Okay. Yeah. Great. So if if you would just close your eyes, just close your eyes. Take a night. We're gonna be here a little while, so. Take a nice, deep, relaxing breath. And just uh, shift your focus to a, uh, or just recall, I should say, a loving moment in your life. And just nod your head whenever you're there. All right, good. And I'm going to digress just a bit. Keep your eyes closed. I just want to cover one little thing about recalling a loving moment, which sometimes uh, is confusing to students. Recalling a loving moment to some students says, oh, okay, we're about to do this. We're going to be bringing in God or Allah or, or something like this. And so I better do this right. If I don't do it right, we're just going to fail. And it's, this is not good, you know. So I got to have a Hollywood moment. I've got to have, you know, harps playing and angels singing and orchestras play all that stuff. Okay. No, none of that. The only reason we recall a loving moment is we're just doing our best to align with the pure love of the unseen therapist. We're not there yet. She knows that, you know, that I know that, <laughs> Hers is pure, ours is not. So we're just aligning. We're basically saying to her, okay, we're aligning with you as best we can. We're going to hand you a little something. Uh, hopefully you can help us, but we're listening. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's all that is. It doesn't need to be anything more than mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So having done that, now we're going to shift our focus again for you. And we're going to now imagine, as best you can, being in the womb, your mother's womb. There you are. You didn't ask to be there, by the way, but you, there you are. Okay. And your mother, at this point, is under a great deal of stress having to do with your father, who at this point has a big need to project out, to be aggressive, to be angry, to be abusive, and all of that. And she already has, a, it's something we would, we would understand. She's already got, so doesn't need another child. Uh, fin financially, there are some problems, and another child brings around more financial stuff, more requirements for attention from mother once born lots of reasons why mother wouldn't want you but principle in here is oh all this stress you know that i'm feeling with with your father the aggressiveness the drunk behavior the abuse and so on as a fetus there you are in this womb cage, this prison, 
and it is sort of like a prison. You're in, you're totally dependent upon mother for your very survival. And what you're getting is a blend of what we all get. You're getting some loving moments by your mother, despite some of the resistance. Okay. But you're also getting too much, perhaps, of all this fear, anxiety, stress as a result of your father's behavior and her response to your father's behavior. And you're getting that. You're getting that blend. We all get this blend. Okay. But for you, if it's, as you describe it, it's the fearful part, the stressful part is a lot more than the loving moments. And so you're getting more than your share. And you have nothing to do with this, by the way. Nothing to do with it. You're just there getting it. All right. And what you're doing with it, of course, we don't know. But you are in this cage and you are getting it. And this is forming uh, your attitudes, your beliefs, what this world is about. And you're forming it's about being in a cage. Does this seem right so far? Mm, yes, it seems. And I, I have just felt this fear like, like everywhere in my like chest and abdomen. And also my heart started to beat faster. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, that, thank you. Those are good responses because now we know, or that's a big clue at least, that we are pinpointing something quite helpful okay mm -hmm. does it seem that way to you yes it seems like that okay like, uh, through my body sensations all right so mm -hmm. there you are in there and you may even feel alone mm -hmm. but this is yes. where that yeah but this is now where you may not have recognized it then this is now where unseen therapists can be of value because whether you are were aware of it, inside that womb cage was unseen therapists. You just weren't loving you at all times. You just weren't aware of it because of all the input from your mother's responses to what's going on in her world. But there's unseen therapist, and let's just take a moment now and let you be in the womb. Recognize somehow, oh, despite all this other input, here is the unseen therapist. Calm, peaceful, loving, acting as sort of a shield from all this stuff your mother is going through. And if you would, if you would, as best you can in your imagination, describe to me, tell me in words, what she's doing at the moment. Is she hugging you with her, with her arms? Is she consoling you? Is she singing you a song? What is she doing? And what's your response? Tell me something about that. Mm, it just came to my imagination that this is like uh, uh, she just took like um, uh, like she's like acting like a shell. Like so I am in a womb, but she also covers me uh, with this like light, I guess. And uh, there are like different rays going on on me, like it, and it's peace, it's love, and it's safety. Okay. Like safety is a huge part of it. Yeah. Uh, as soon as you said that word, I get a little bingo in my head as well. Safety, not okay. safe, not safe. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I'm picking up this idea to protect your mother is a she's not safe and therefore it's your responsibility to make her safe does that ring a bell at all 
Yes, yes. She wasn't give me. She wasn't able to give me the feeling of safety. Okay. But like I have never felt safe. Uh, so I was trying to give uh, her safety. Yeah, you are right. Okay. So unseen therapist, at least now in the womb, and at least in our imagination, is now providing you some form of safety. I, I, I'm. Do I say this right? Yes, she's giving me safety. All right, so you have safety. Mm -hmm. Safety inside the cage, the womb cage. Uh, yes, maybe, like... Uh... But I, I cannot imagine the cage. I don't see the cage, but I just see the womb and this light and myself as a fetus. Okay, well, well were you seeing the cage before we brought in unseen therapist? I, I don't remember. Yes, there was like, I could imagine some cage. Okay. I guess, but yeah. Now that unseen therapist comes in, the cage is harder to imagine. Yes, like, it's harder. Yes, it's harder okay. to imagine. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Don't ever let me impose words on you. It's, this has got to be what's going on with you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So there, there she is, and she's uh, giving you some kind of insulation, some kind of safety, some kind of understanding that what your mother is going through has nothing to do with you. It's her response to her outside world, which is becoming input to you, but unseen therapist is giving you safety about it. All right. So now you're in the womb, safer than you were. And it's time now to leave the womb and to be born. Now, this is often, as you would know as an MD student, very traumatic. Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry, I was disconnected. Yeah, I, I saw that. Okay. <laughs> sorry. So I, I, I am coming back. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're exiting the womb you're being born mm -hmm. and this is often a, a trauma because there you are i mean you're in this sort of enclosed warm place and now you're almost instantly into a different place okay. mm -hmm. you may have some doctor's hands on you or something like that you may not be immediately given to your mother for breastfeeding we don't know what happened but there's lots of trauma goes on in there. We just don't know all about that. But in this case, it's a, it's a, it's a good thing. Whoa, 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 what's happening? What's happening? What's happening? And lose touch with unseen therapists. But we're not going to do that here. We're going to imagine yourself coming out into the arms of unseen therapists. Maybe not yet, not yet at your mother's breast or in your mother's arms, but certainly in the arms of unseen therapists. Can you imagine that? Yes, I can imagine that, but this feeling of safety is so new to me. Well, can you hang on to it? Like, I find it difficult to trust, like, that I am in a safe place, but I feel like, mm, really, like, mm, I mean, like, it's difficult to trust uh, that I can be in safety. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. all right. But I, is... can, I can imagine that I'm, like, in a good hands, and I can imagine myself as a fetus. Like, I, I love this feeling. Okay. Well, all right. One reason we're recording this is so you can replay this, and I would replay it several times. You know, uh, and each time it's likely to land a little more solidly. Okay. Mm -hmm. But to the extent you can hold on to it, a safety, a good feeling, do that. 
do that. Mm -hmm. And it's okay if you let go of it. At least we understand it's doable. Mm -hmm. We understand it's got a value and you can return to it. All right. But we're not going to beat, beat you up or have you beat yourself up because you're not doing it perfectly. Okay. This is brand new to you. All right. Mm -hmm. So there you are. And uh, you're outside the womb. You don't for, you haven't forgotten all these inputs you got from your mother's fearful responses and so on. All right. And there you are eventually in your mother's arms, feeding. Were you breastfed as far as you know? Yes, breastfed for a very long time until my three years old. Oh, okay. So 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 there you are in your mother's arms, breastfeeding held, but you're still experiencing her fears, which are ongoing. Her own stress, which is ongoing. Unseen therapist is still there. Mm -hmm. And you can always lean on her, but nonetheless, the input from your mother being a fearful, abused type response is coming to you. And what are uh, the? Uh, Go ahead. Sorry, I, is that I interrupted you? I, I just can't imagine like protective feeling from my mother. I always feel like um, she's like a weaker than me, and like I like I need to like to provide her safety. Oh, okay. So even yeah. at this very young age, in your imagination, as you're going through this. You're sensing yes. it's you who are the more powerful, the more loving compared to her. Yes, more like more like stronger. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this is what I feel. All right, and I can hear yeah. uns I can hear unseen therapy. This is in my imagination. Okay, that I can hear this nudging. That this this is a good thing. This is a powerful thing for you because you are understanding the power of love you are recognizing your mother has a hard time with it because she's got so many other fearful stressful balls to bounce okay or juggle mm -hmm. and so you are the phrase we used before the rock here mm -hmm. and you pick up the need you recognize her. It's a very loving thing. You recognize the need. Now, there may be some unnecessary fear within you and so on, but the important thing is bubbling up to the top. And correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. I've seen therapists is telling me this, okay? <laughs> you are having this experience, which is very, very mature especially for your, you may not know what to do with it yet, but that very feeling is a mature feeling. Does that seem right? Or does that seem, you tell me. Mm, yes, it's very right. I see you wiping but, your eyes. Are there tears? Yes. You were telling me earlier that you don't cry. <laughs> yeah, it was a long time that I couldn't like cry maybe. Even during the therapy, I couldn't like okay. cry. Well, are, is this a good thing that you're crying? Mm, yes. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, so it is so right that I always felt that I am like more mature. Even my mother was telling me like, "You seem to be like the most mature person in the in the house." Mm. Yeah. Okay. Even if I I was the smallest kid. And even when I was like seven, eight years old, I don't know, I found the ways like uh, to entertain my mother, like uh, to find like, I don't know, I was earning money from my very childhood and I would make her happy during her birthdays, like buying some presents for her. Like I could sense her like and I think I could sense like many people around me. 
um, but I could also sense everything was going on in like inside her. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. So unseen therapist is going hooray, hooray. I mean, you can, you, you, she's almost doing a little dance because of this ability of yours, this maturity of yours, this recognition of yours. Very helpful, even at this very, very, very early stage of your physical life. So as it as it unfolds and as time goes on, as time goes on, you begin to recognize what's going on in your world. That is your father's behavior, for example, your mother's response, her need for your protection, although from a physical point of view, you're very young and you can hardly do something about your father's physical abuse that may occur, emotional abuse, and so on. There's not much you can do because you're not recognized as the power that you really are. So in that sense, it's like you're in a cage. It's like you're in a prison. You want to love, you want to protect, but you're inside the cage, locked. You can do something from inside the cage, but not what you would like. Does this seem right? Mm, I'm not like, mm, like, mm, I'm not sure about the cage. Uh, like, uh, maybe like, I am not, yes, I feel this cage, mm, but I don't know of, um, like, I don't know, like, what's the composition of this cage, maybe, or maybe this is the weight of this responsibility. I am well, not sure. Well, cage is just a metaphor. It's your, your, yeah. you're like trapped within something. It's your, 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 your thwarted, you're stopped. Uh, from protecting your mother as much as you might like to be able to because of your physical size for among other things. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. I was always like uh, trying to do everything for her, like for her to feel comfortable, to feel happier, uh, to feel protected. I want, I wanted my mother to be pro like to feel safe, but my father would never allow me to do this. Okay. Yeah. So whether whether you call it a cage or a prison, you are somehow or other put in a box. You are stopped from doing this like you might like to do it. Mm, yes, yes. Like um, my father was on my way, I guess. Uh, like like the brakes were on. Um, brakes. Yeah, like it's like I, I find it difficult to breathe, maybe because like I know like what's needed for my mother, but this is not happening because of my father. But then again, I feel sorry for my father, uh, because I know like he is not a bad person at all, but uh, he need he needs also help, but I don't know how to help him also. Okay. Yeah. And you don't really know how to protect your mother and you don't know how to help your father. And that is a yeah. important motivation for you, even at your very young age. Mm -hmm. I, I say it correctly. Yes, it, it was my motivation, like to make uh, my parents happy. Like uh, that's why I succeeded like in some stuff um, and like I maybe uh, like internally, I always wanted to give to be the answer, but um, uh, I wasn't like I, I tried to be the answer for their problems. But too young to be effective, am I correct? At that time, mm, yes, too young to be effective and not knowing how to do it. Yeah, not knowing how to. The yeah. motivation was there. The love Motiv was, there, was there. Yeah, yeah. Motivation was always there. All right. All right. Now, 
I'm trying to put, I'm trying to get nudges from unseen therapists about where to go with this. And, uh, and the prison or cage we once talked about and so on. So let me just be quiet a moment, okay. What I'm getting is to switch metaphors, like the, the idea of the breaks instead of the idea of a cage or a prison. It's like you want to speed, speed down the highway, but somebody's putting, they got their foot on the brakes and you can't go very fast. That works or not? It's like, it's like a wall, you mean like bricks, yes? Bricks made of the wall, like makes the wall or something uh -huh. like that. Am I correct? Well, we'll use that metaphor, a brick, a brick wall. It's, it's there. You're trying to get beyond it, but you're just not big enough, strong enough, experienced enough, and so on. To yes. get on the other, to get on the other side of the wall. Yes. Yes. All right. Yeah, it's bricks. Well, breaks in a wall are a little bit different metaphor. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes. I, I guess like it's bricks. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, I, if you want to change metaphors, we'll just do that as time goes on. Okay, just yeah. You, mm -hmm. you always you always correct me here. Mm -hmm. So here's all this motivation, but you're finding that your mother, your mother is going to respond however she responds. And important phrase, you are not responsible for your mother's response. Does that feel right? Mm. I am not like responsible for my mother's response. Mm. I don't know, like, I am so, like, tightly connected with my mother from my childhood. Well, yeah, so but you're, it's, go ahead. It's, like, sorry. difficult for me, like, to separate, like, uh, and to tell that it's her responsibility, I guess. Well, you may feel the responsibility. Um, and that would be clear. Mm -hmm. uh, what you may not be able to do at that very young age is to recognize that, her responses are based upon her childhood and her experiences and her life and her beliefs and all the things that you don't have anything to do with. Okay. They all showed up and formed uh, all the stuff going on with her before you came along. And so her responses are her responses. And yes, your, yes. your father's behavior is a result of all of those similar things in his life and his behaviors you're not responsible for. You may hope as a very, very young child that somehow or other you have the power to change all that. But that power comes from within them, not from within you. Tell me if that lands. Mm, yes, it would be really nice if they could take all the responsibility to themselves, like if um, they have taken it. See, what you can do, and from this conversation, as far as I can tell what you have done, is as you have grown up, and become responsible, felt responsible. You have become a model for them. They may not be listening to the every word you say and giving every word you say the kind of weight you would like to, etc. But you have become a model of peace for them that they would pick up. Is this on target? Yes, this is like so on target that I didn't realize it myself before. 
because uh, with me, like, they feel loved, I guess, in safety, like any one of them. So um, I always have this, uh, like, uh, inner urge to be their parent, like, uh, to make them feel good, feel safe in every aspect. Like, they will yeah. go shopping with me, like, but separately. And uh, I would like close them uh, to choose them the best clothes, the most expensive one, and they will have fun with me. Like, so I feel like this is my responsibility uh, to make them happy. So I, I guess, yes. And my father and my mother, they feel, they feel like um, as I am a peaceful person to be with. All right, so you would be a model. I picked that up from you myself, by the way. Okay. Yeah, that yeah, that yeah, okay. yeah. That's so true. Okay, so you're a, a great model. So, see, you don't have to have just the right words and, and just the right counseling. Your mere presence brings about a very important message. You, all of us, radiate who we are inside. What's going on inside? Your father radiates aggressiveness, or did, okay? Something shifted. Now he's radiating a lot more peace. Okay. I see you nodding your head, so yeah, okay. Now, there's something missing here so far I, that I see that I want to discuss with you, and then you can, you tell me how to use unseen therapists to do this. And by the way, while you are modeling all this peace, you are modeling unseen therapists, whether or not you're recognizing it <laughs> or not. <laughs> but what we no, want to I, I did... go ahead. No, I didn't recognize that. Do you mean in my childhood, like uh, until the, up until this point, or during the session? No. Um... That's my view. That's my view. All, all, all this time that you have more peace within you, that you are this model of love, this other way of communicating, which is more important than finding just the right words or something like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. The mere model, what you radiate mm -hmm. is assisted by unseen therapist, whether you recognize it or not. You don't have to buy that. That's not required mm -hmm. that. I'm mm -hmm. just, mm -hmm. that's my experience. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's that's her guiding you. That's her helping you radiate, et cetera. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, let's get back to this missing thing. All right. mm -hmm. So you feel responsible in the very early years Mm -hmm. And you still feel responsible to the fact that it's limiting your life currently. You're not free of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. You still radiate. You're still doing your job. But you're not free of it. I got to do it for them. I got to do it for them. I've got to do it for them. Okay. Mm -hmm. And at some level, you know, you don't need. I mean, you can still be a model sure you're going to be a model you can't even help but be a model but to feel responsible even at this later age there comes a point there's a point in there where the responsibility needs to fade and let them be on their own apparently your father has made this shift himself perhaps because of your modeling, perhaps because of other inputs and so on, because he's a lot more peaceful now. Hold on just a minute. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me, give me some logic. Why do you need to still feel responsible. Have you not done your job? It's an interesting question. Um, like, um, 
it seems like um, maybe I have done with my parents. But um, right now, like, I have other new members in my life. Um, you have new what in your life? Uh, like, uh, new members of our family. Like, uh. um, I have one nephew and two nieces. And I love them so much. And I don't know. Maybe allow, right now I have shifted my responsibility towards them. Well, they could probably use it being so young more than your parents. But I, I, I'm looking for, I'm looking for, answer this question for me. Mm -hmm. um, what good does it do your parents for you to still be responsible for them? I don't even know the answer. Like, I I don't even know what kind of good they take it from it. Maybe they feel themselves like, um, like maybe they get from it like something which they didn't get from their parents from their own childhood because both my mother and father like didn't have like good fulfilling childhood my mother like was separated from her parents at all okay. mm. but, so like it's like i am being like sorry for them maybe like mm. i know like they are i feel like that they need to be protected because they are like weaker weaker than me like i don't know what what kind of weak is that but it's like I, I'm needed for the very survival. Like, um, is that I, logic? Is that logically true? You are needed for their very survival. <laughs> are you going to eat their food for them? No, like, no, no, of course. But it's more like emotionally. <laughs> it's can I open my eyes or? Yeah, sure, sure, oh, sure. Okay, sure. okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's like. <laughs> It's like, I feel like um, I'm afraid that even I have discovered that I'm afraid that even if I will start my own life, like I cannot provide them with my own life, like with my love and uh, they will be like so alone without me. Like, I don't know, like even if I will have like my own family and everything, it will feel, I will feel like, mm, like I have left them or like, who will protect them? Like, who will take care of them? Uh, let me ask you this. If you died today, okay. Yeah. I, I'm going to wave my hand and you're gone. Okay. okay. Are, are they going to die instantly, your parents, or are they going to go ahead and live their life? Yes, of course, they will be, like, sad. But, yeah, they, they will live their lives. <laughs> well uh, these are reframing type questions okay Be because what because as you go back and listen to this recording i think you will see well that's a little irrational what i just said like you know i've got to be there and their very survival depends upon me and and things like that you know i mean those may, may not be your exact words but that was close yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right yeah. Well, I, let me put it this way. I think you're an absolute delight. And you're someone I would really love to talk to some more and some more and, and all of that. Okay. But. Yeah, we are running off time. It's like two hours, half past. Oh, my God. Well, yeah, but see, you're not responsible for my happiness. I mean, you just aren't. <laughs> I mean, you can, you can think you are if you want to, but you just aren't. Okay, when this is all over, I this meeting, I'm going to go for a run and a walk, and and I'm going to go out to breakfast and you know read a book and go about my life. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you are not responsible for my emotional well-being. Yeah. Now, your mere presence can bring joy and happiness to me. Hooray, hooray. Okay. Yeah. 
but you're not responsible for that. Mm-hmm. Or, 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 or are you are you responsible? Like I always feel that responsibility. Like I always like instantly like feel or something like when someone is in ha- is not happy and not feeling good, and then I try like to give them energy and like everything okay. and make them right. feel comfortable. Like this is what I usually do. Like with my patients, with my colleagues, with my sure. friends, like with everyone. Sure. And all of, all of that is a, a laudable applause, you know, good, good, good. Yeah. If you're going over the top, if it's excess, that's causing you stress. How are your palms, by the way? It's a little bit, it's a little bit sweaty. Well, if it was an eight or nine, what is it now? It's, I guess, it's like six or five even. Yeah, it's less. All right. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's do, I want to do one other little thing here Mm -hmm. for now. Okay. There's a whole, whole, all this that we've done with NC, there is a whole lot in there. And I would go back over this several Mm -hmm. times because each Mm -hmm. time you're likely to get a little more, a little more, a little more, a little Mm -hmm. more. Mm-hmm. Okay. But if you would close your close your eyes again for me. Mm-hmm. And let's um let's take this excess responsibility feeling. Do you do you see it as excess more than it needs to be? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, it's uh, too much to bear. Okay. So let's take the exit. That doesn't mean it's not useful to be the model, you know, and to, uh, you know, to want to assist in all these areas. That's different than feeling responsible. And I got to do it or they're not going to survive kind of thing. That's, that's a little extreme. Okay. So we're going to take the extreme, the excess part of it. Mm-hmm. And metaphorically, we're going to call it or make it into a, throbbing red ball that is just floating around in front of you. Mm-hmm. It's about the size of a basketball. Mm-hmm. All right. It's throbbing. Like that. Okay. And it's the excess. It's the unnecessary part of it. It's the thing that even represents a cage or a prison that you're somehow glued to or bound to or something like that. But there it is. Mm -hmm. And you give that to unseen therapist because she knows that you being a model is plenty. It's plenty. You don't have to have responsibility for everything. After all, if you're responsible for your mother and your father, what about the rest of your family members? And what about all the people you work with? And what about your your teachers in med school? And, and I mean, are you responsible for what does it stop? Okay. <laughs> Throbbing red ball. And so you show that to unseen therapists. She smiles. She understands this is excess. You don't need to be burdened by it. And so in your imagination, you allow unseen therapists to send a understanding, cooling, healing, loving breeze towards this throbbing red basketball in front of you. And as that breeze starts to surround the, all these excess emotions, I'm responsible, I'm responsible, I'm responsible kind of thing. That responsibility feeling cannot, that excess responsibility feeling becomes unnecessary and can't survive in all that love and understanding. And so as that breeze and love and understanding surrounds that ball, the color of the ball starts to fade from red to pink to flesh color to transparency. 
and the throbbing. But there's even a word that goes, I'm responsible, I'm responsible, I'm responsible, I'm responsible. And here the breeze comes, I'm responsible, I'm responsible, I'm responsible. Why am I responsible? Huh? Why? A little bit maybe, but that much? Quiet. And the size of the basketball goes from the size of a baseball to the size of a golf ball to the size of a little tiny BB to nothing. And we're going to do that again. I am responsible. I am excess responsible. The responsibility for all of my families, my Father, my mother, and everybody else's well-being emotionally and otherwise is all my responsibility. Unseen therapist brings in the breeze. I mean, the throbbing red ball. And then the, here comes the breeze. I'm responsible. I'm responsible. I'm responsible. I'm responsible. I'm responsible. Why am I responsible? I don't need to be responsible. The color changes, the size changes, it disappears. Now, do that in your mind another time or two or three or whatever you want. I am responsible, the throbbing red ball, the breeze, the fading, and so on. Time or two or whatever it takes until you've gone as far as you can go. There's no grades here. You don't get an A or a C or anything like that. There's just whatever happens, happens. And when you're done, just open your eyes and we'll talk. Yeah. Okay. Were you able to follow along? Okay, or did you have you have some competing thoughts of some kind, or what? No, I didn't have any competing thoughts. I just felt like something like was coming here, uh, like my body sensation. Like I felt like how my shoulders may be relaxed. Like, like some tension went, I guess because they are very tense all the time. Mm -hmm. Like some bodily sensations here. Like Were they releasing sensations or some kind of tightness? No, or? no it's not tightness. It's like something really like a release. Uh, okay. Yeah. How are your palms? Still like a five or whatever they were? Six? Uh, it's, not, it's like four maybe. Like my feet is much better. My hands is like four, but it's less than it was like before. Yeah. Okay. It's well, really less. sometimes time goes on mm -hmm. and it, get, it even gets more, it gets like three and two and one and zero or something like that. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Could happen. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. We don't know. It just does yeah. happen sometimes. So just be aware of that possibility. Um, okay. Okay, I think, I'll just repeat myself here. Mm -hmm. But when I send you a link to this recording, if you'll play it back, especially the session part of it, but there's the earlier parts, a lot of reframing in there. So, I mean, that's, worth doing i understand it's two hours but no it's it's great <laughs> okay. it will be my favorite movie to watch okay well yeah watch the movie but 
but to run that session again several times mm -hmm. is likely to get a little deeper each time, likely, okay? Um, but then we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to go over? Uh, I think that's all. And also maybe I shared this with Jamie, I guess. Uh, it was like, um, uh, it's like related to the safety part because uh, when like we uh, had a session right now with unseen therapist, like I felt safety in the womb. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, yeah, she provided me safety. And then I talked with Jamie when like uh, I had this episode with some kind of person like one and a half ago. And uh, this person was the one like with whom I felt myself so much in safety. I mean, like the first time in my life. Okay, so that kind of safety is the kind of thing it, it's worth even fantasizing about when you're, you know, before you go to bed or in a shower, or whenever you fantasize, okay? But it's, it's fantasize being safe like that, okay? Keep imagining that safety. And, and the more you, it, it's like conditioning the safety within. It's one mm -hmm. thing to talk about it, to have a momentary experience. It's another thing to have it, some kind of ongoingness about it. Mm -hmm. Thank you.